एस चांद प्रेजेंट एजुकेशनल वीडियो लेक्चर्स एज पर दी ए आई सी टी ई कारिकुलम डिफिकल्ट कॉन्सेप्ट मेड इजी स्टडी एनी वेयर एनी टाइम So in previous videos we have already talked about various concepts related to Schrodinger's wave equation we have learned how atomic orbitals look like how do we derive them mathematically and then we talked about molecular orbitals or formation of molecules so in the previous video when we discussed about molecular orbitals you must remember that molecular orbitals are formed by linear combination of atomic orbitals and their shapes or geometries are deciphered or decided on the basis of fact how these two waveforms or wave functions are combining we also learned that combination of atomic orbitals in a positive fashion that means their addition can result in bonding molecular orbitals or it can result in subtraction that is anti bonding molecular orbitals if two waves are not in the same phase apart from that we also talked about various kind of labels that were assigned on the basis of geometries or orientations of these waves when they are interacting such as sigma pi and so on so now the important question is when these atomic orbitals combine and they form molecular orbitals how electrons are filled in them and what is the energy difference because every orbital is not having the same energy similarly bmo and abmo also have different energy so can we represent the formation of a molecule in the form of energy diagram that is the basic concept of this talk welcome to ashan academy my name is aditya and you are watching engineering chemistry videos if you want to learn more about this topic you can refer this book from ashan publishing you can find link for ebook in the description box below so we are going to talk in this topic about the energy levels of molecular orbitals this will be covered in two parts part 1 and part 2 in part 1 we will understand how to draw energy level diagrams what are their basic features and then in the second part we will talk more about examples of various type of molecular energy diagrams we will also cover multi center orbitals where there will be multiple atoms together which will be involved in making molecules so let us start our discussion with the fundamental concept of energy level diagrams now what is an energy level diagram energy level diagram is basically a graph which tells you about energy of various electrons so suppose if i talk about the atomic orbitals alone let's not talk about molecular orbitals first so what do you think 1s will have the least energy so if i place a line here it can represent 1s then you can go up you can have energy for 2s and then you can have little more energy for 3s that little more energy for 3p and then you can subsequently go ahead you can have energy for d and then you can have energy for 4p so gradually when you move away from the atom the energy of every uh, uh, orbital is higher and higher and this particular diagram is called as energy level diagram or energy diagram but we are not more concerned about this diagram for atoms we are concerned about energy diagrams for molecules so what happens when molecules combine and how to draw the energy diagrams so we should remember one thing that if two atoms are combining together the inner electrons are generally not participating but what is participating is the outermost electrons which we call valence shell so since valence shell electrons are participating in formation of molecular orbitals it is important to consider the energies of these atomic orbitals suppose let's talk about carbon which has atomic number 6 in this case we can say that carbon has got two electrons in its first orbit and then it has got 
two more electrons in the s orbital and two more electrons in the p orbital. So these are second orbit electrons. That means all of them are valence cell electrons. So we are going to use these electrons for developing energy level diagrams. Now when one carbon combines with another carbon, then we have two atoms with these four different orbit of three different orbitals. One is s 2s orbital, another is 2px orbital, another is 2py orbital. So all these orbitals will be associated in forming a bond. Now, depending on electronic configuration, energy level diagrams have a very basic feature. When you develop energy level diagrams, what you should consider is, let's start from here. We on one side draw atomic orbitals or the positions of atom one. Let's say we write it uh, in the same way. A1 psi1, which is representing the wave function of one atom. And on the other side, we will write a wave function of another wave, A2 psi2. So let us imagine that one atom is having 2s orbital as valence orbital as well as 2p. So the outermost orbit is having electrons in either s or p and we call it as 2s or 2p. So if you have 2s orbitals, then they can combine from each atom, one atom and another atom, they can combine linearly to give rise to sigma 2s because s will always combine in a sigma fashion, it cannot combine in pi fashion or it can combine in sigma star 2s. Now notice the position of these empty boxes which I have plotted here. Actually this is representing an energy level diagram. Where you move higher, the energy will be more. So if the energy level for atomic orbital was somewhere here, almost same energy level was experienced for another identical atom provided it is identical. If this is carbon, let's say this is also carbon and two of them are combining together to make a molecular orbital. So <clears throat> there is a likelihood that it will either form BMO and BMO will be more stable compared to individual atomic orbitals. So, have, so we have drawn that box a little bit below here. That means energy of sigma 2s, that means sigma bonding molecular orbital arising from 2s is lesser, it is more stable, we have drawn here. On the other hand, the anti-bonding sigma molecular orbital, which is arising from combination of these two orbitals when they are not in phase, that will have slightly higher energy. So this is how we, we give rise to uh, a simple molecular orbital. Now on the other hand, if you have P, let's say we are representing 2p. So it is quite obvious that compared to 2s, 2p will have higher energy. So 2p atomic orbital should be plotted here somewhere upwards. This is 2p and there will be three degenerate orbitals in p subshell, which might be represented as px, py and pz. Similarly here px, py and pz. So now these p orbitals combine in two different ways. Remember that one p orbital looks like this, another p orbital looks like this and another p orbital looks like this. So let's say this is px, this is py and this is pz. So if entire p subshell is combining with another p subshell, you can imagine the fact that only one of the orbital will be having head on interaction. That means if the entire orbital is interacting with one, there can only be a possibility of one sigma BMO or ABMO depending on the wave function here. But rest of the orbitals can only have sideways orientation. 
So when these three orbitals of one atom and these three orbitals of another atom are going to combine, one of them will make sigma BMO or sigma ABMO, whereas two of them will make pi BMO and pi ABMO. And there is also a difference in energy of sigma and pi. Now here is one important feature. Whether sigma is having more energy or pi is having more energy, it varies from atom to atom. Usually for smaller atoms like uh, those which are of first and second group, you ignore oxygen and fluorine. So if you leave oxygen and fluorine and you keep all uh, atoms of the first and second group of periodic table, then you will have px, py or I can simply write pi bonding orbital that will have the minimum energy. Whereas sigma, sigma p orbital that will have higher energy and then of course the other two that is pi anti-bonding and sigma anti-bonding. So this will be the distribution of new orbitals which we call as molecular orbitals when you are considering a case of atoms of smaller size. That means small atoms except oxygen and fluorine. So if they are combining to form molecules like O2 or F2, this will not be the correct picture. But yes, you can draw it for carbon, which is a small, uh, small atom. If two carbon atoms are combining, then P subshells will orient or reorient to form molecular orbitals like this. The least energy will be pi p orbitals, pi bonding p orbitals, then sigma p, then pi star, and then sigma star. Whereas if you go for higher atoms, particularly those of oxygen and uh, fluorine or even more, then this order will be slightly changed. Sigma will come first, pi will come later, and then pi star will come here, and sigma star will come here. So that's a basic difference between the molecular orbitals formed by smaller atoms or molecular or atoms, uh, molecular orbitals formed by larger atoms. Now with this, we complete one part. We, we say that how they are going to form the molecular orbitals. But one thing is remaining here that how do we fill electrons? So suppose we are talking about one carbon combining with another carbon. So obviously one carbon has got two electrons in the 2s. You remember this? We talked about it in a while. We wrote here electronic configuration of carbon, 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. That means this is the valence shell and then one carbon is combining with another carbon to make, to make a molecule. This will be participating in uh, molecular orbital formation. This will also be participating in molecular orbital formation. So we have two electrons in 2s from one atom, two electrons from another atom. So before combining, these two orbitals give rise to BMO and molecular orbital. And since there are four electrons, the Hund's rule will still apply. Each orbital can only have two electrons. So two electrons each will be filled in BMO and ABMO. Now coming to the next one. The electrons which will be present in this, so we just have two electrons here and two electrons here, uh, 2p2. Now since there are four electrons and there are so many orbitals, you have one, two, three, four, five, six. So how the filling will start? Usually the filling starts in this manner that the lowest energy levels are filled. So since you have four electrons, there is a likelihood of the formation of pi electrons and sigma electrons, sigma bonds. So in total, you have to fill here four electrons. Now these four electrons will be filled accordingly. They will not move into the higher, higher energy molecular orbitals, that is antibonding molecular orbitals, unless 
these bonding molecular orbitals are completely filled. So this was just a hypothetical example. It can be any atom. We will, uh, we will look at a specific example in a while. So in a hy hypothetical example, you can see and you can relate the formation of energy level diagrams in this manner that you first write uh, atomic orbitals on each side. This is atomic orbital of the valence shell of atom 1. This is for atom 2. And then in between, you write down or you draw all the possible structures of molecular orbitals with the ascending order of their energies. As you move up, you have more energies. And then you accordingly fill electrons as per the Hohn's rule of maximum multiplicity. That means according to the energy levels. First, you fill the energy levels at the lowest point, And then you go for filling the higher point. So this is how energy level diagrams are plotted. Let's see one specific example of formation of bonding molecular orbital here in the case of ethane. So let's consider an example of ethane which will have two carbons combining together. So you have one carbon combining with another carbon and as I told you in order to draw this energy level diagram you have to first write down the valence shell energy state. So there are two electrons in the ground state in the 2s, you can write it down as 2s2 and there are two electrons in the 2p whereas first before combining it get excited. So one of the electron will jump from here to here. So anytime when carbon combines with another atom, it's one of the electron is excited to this state. So you have equivalent orbitals now, 1s1, 2s1, 2px1, 2px2, 2py1 and 2pz1. So you can represent the excited carbon as 2s1, 2px1, 2py1 and 2pz1. And this is correctly represented here in this electronic configuration. Now, they will also undergo hybridization. Hybridization is a process that is explained in organic chemistry. So, S and 2P, they will hybridize to give rise to another orbital, equivalent orbital, which are called as SP2, and one will remain unhybridized. So, now when you are planning to draw a molecular orbital, you can again see that PZ, which is likely to form a pi interaction, so when it will form a pi bonding, pi molecular orbital, the pi will be having a lower energy and pi star, which is anti-bonding molecular orbital, which will have higher energy. So this will be expected when you have a double bond in formation. This will not be seen in normal case in ethane. Ethane will have this kind of structure. So there will be straight away uh, one carbon atom, which will be sp3 hybridized having a sigma bond with another carbon and rest of the orbits will make sigma interactions with hydrogen in this manner. So here you will just have sigma and sigma star. But when it comes to ethane, if you look at the structure of ethane, there will be two things, sp2 hybridization and then you have another pi interaction coming up here. We will look more into it. We will look more into the details of how we can plot these energy diagrams, especially when the atoms are not identical. Here we have seen that on this side also carbon, this side also carbon. We will see that what if this side is carbon and this side is nitrogen. We will see uh, in, in case of other atoms when pi as well as uh, sigma interactions are also being formed, but that will be done in the second part of this video. If you want to learn more about this topic, you can refer this book from S. Chan Publishing. You can find link for ebook in the description box below. You can like, share and subscribe the channel for continuous use and regular updates. or copied without the permission of the copyright holder.